In our first video on algebra, we learned that the variable can assume any value in an algebraic expression. The value of the variable or variables determine the value of the expression. Can we go the opposite way? That is, if the value of the expression is given, can we find the value of the variable? That's what you call solving an equation. Consider this. What's x if x plus 5 evaluates to 8? The answer is x is equal to 3 because only 3 plus 5 will give you 8. This is called a linear equation in one variable or in a single variable. Linear because the highest power of x is x raised to the 1. Remember, x is the same as x raised to the first power. And in one variable, obviously because the only variable in the equation or the only unknown is x. In this video, we shall limit our discussion to linear equations in one variable. Every equation has two sides, one on the left and one on the right, separated by the equal sign. You are allowed to add, subtract, multiply and divide both sides of an equation with the same number. Consider the equation p minus 4 is equal to 10. One way to find p is to use some logic and guess the answer. We know that only 14 minus 4 will give you 10. And therefore, we can safely say that p is equal to 14. But if you want to go the formal way and solve p minus 4, technically, You should be adding 4 to both sides of the equation. And when you do that, the left hand side becomes P minus 4 plus 4 is equal to the right hand side, which is now 10 plus 4. And minus 4 plus 4 is nothing but equal to 0. Therefore, this is as good as saying P plus 0 or P minus 0 or in other words p is equal to 10 plus 4 which is 14. And this is like saying, well, let's say you and I have the same weight. So your weight is equal to my weight and if I add 4 to your weight and if I add 4 to my weight, the two new numbers are also equal. So you are allowed to add 4 to both sides. You cannot do it on one side, to both sides it's fine. Similarly, you can subtract the same number from both sides or multiply or divide with the same number. Thus, to solve the equation, let's say 8x is equal to 40. Logically, this means 8 times a number called x is equal to 40. So, 8 times what is 40? 8 times 5 is 40. So, you kind of know that this answer should be 5. Technically, what you should be doing is you should be dividing both sides of this equation with 8. Remember, a fraction bar is as good as a division sign. So using a fraction is the same as using division. 8x over x simplifies to, you can simplify the 8 on the top with the 8 on the bottom. So you have 1x, 1x means 1 times x and 1 times any number is that same number. Effectively, we have a x on the left is equal to 40 over 8 or 40 divided with 8 is 5. So when x is multiplied with a number, you want to divide both sides of the equation with that number. Similarly, if the equation is like n over 4 is equal to 10, 
this is as good as saying there is a number called n. You divide that with 4. Over 4 is the same as division with 4. And you get 10. So what's the number? Well, if you are dividing with 4 and you get 10, that means the number must be 40. Right? So you know you have already guessed that the answer is 40. Once again, to do it formally, what you would do is you want to get rid of the denominator 4 and isolate n. You need n is equal to something, right? That's how you solve an equation. So you want to multiply this side with 4. So that the 4 from the top of the numerator simplifies or reduces with the 4 from the bottom to give you a 1. So this is like n times 1 over 1 which is nothing but n. But if you do that, don't forget to do the same thing on the other side. If two numbers are equal, 4 times the first number will be equal to 4 times the second number. So 10 times 4 is 40. You can follow these simple rules to solve more complex equations. Let's try a few. Let's say we have 4y minus 6 is equal to 30. So there's a number, you multiply that number with 4, you take away 6 and you end up with 30. On your way to finding how much y is, your first job is to find how much 4y is. And you can do that by adding 6 to both sides of this equation. So when you do that, the minus 6 and the plus 6 on the left will give you a 0, so that you have 4y is equal to 36 on the other side, 30 plus 6. And now, this is 4y, we need y, therefore, we divide both sides of the equation with 4. So we have y is equal to 36 over 4 or 36 divided with 4 is 9. How about, let's say, 3 times j minus 5 plus 7 times j plus 5 is equal to 50. Well, if you have a number outside of parentheses, you can distribute that number to each term inside the parentheses, meaning over here 3 multiplies with j and 3 multiplies with negative 5. So we have 3 times j is 3j, and 3 times negative 5 are a positive 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Plus, let's do the same with the 7. 7 times j is 7j. Plus, 7 times 5 is 35 is equal to 50 on the other side. Let's combine the like terms. We have a 3j and a 7j, both positive. Which means 3 apples plus 7 apples is 10 apples or 3j plus 10j, sorry 7j is 10j. And we have a negative 15 plus 35. Negative 15 plus 35, the positive side is heavier. So we have a plus and 35 minus 15 is 20 is equal to 50. Now that we are here. We need j, but our first job is to find out how much 10j is. Therefore, subtract 20 from both sides. So you have 10j plus 20 minus 20 is 0 is equal to 50 minus 20 is 30. If 10 times a number is 30, no prize in guessing to find the number, you divide both sides with 10. Therefore, j is equal to 3. How about this one? 2 thirds p plus 6 is equal to 32. Our first job is to find out 2 thirds p. Isolate 2 thirds p. Get rid of the plus 6 by subtracting 6 from both sides. Therefore, we have 2 thirds p Plus 6 minus 6 is 0 is equal to 32 minus 6 which is 26. Now we need P. We have a 2 thirds P. So what can we do? 
we can simply multiply both sides of this equation with a 3 on the top so that it cancels with the 3 on the bottom and a 2 on the bottom so that it cancels with the 2 on the top or 3 seconds. And if you do that, don't forget to multiply the other side with 3 seconds as well. So this becomes cancel the 3 with the 3, 2 with the 2, you have a 1. 1 p or p is equal to 26 times 3 seconds. Now how do you multiply 26 with 3 seconds? Remember fractions? 26 is 26 over 1 times 3 over 2. Simplify. Divide this with 2, this with 2. So you have 26 divided with 2 is 13 over 1 times 3 over 1, which is 13 times 3 over 1, which is 39 over 1, which is 39. So P is equal to 39. Are you good? Okay, let's do another one. How about negative 4 times, let's say, 2 minus x plus 1 all over 3. So the whole thing is divided with 3 is equal to 7. Look, our first job is to get rid of the 3 from the denominator. And how can we do that? By simply multiplying 3 with both sides of this equation. Now, this isn't 7.3. A dot is the same as multiplication. So, this is 7 times 3. So, we have negative 4 times 2 minus x. Remember, 2 minus x inside the parentheses, negative 4 outside means negative 4 multiplies with the whole thing, 2 minus x. Plus 1, cross of the 3 from the denominator with the 3 from the numerator is equal to 7 times 3, which is 21. Our next job is to get rid of this plus 1 by subtracting 1 from both sides. So we have negative 4 times 2 minus x is equal to 21 minus 1 is 20. Plus 1 minus 1 will give you 0. Get rid of the negative 4 then by dividing both sides with negative 4. So we have 2 minus x, negative 4 and negative 4 cross off is equal to a positive 20 divided by a negative 4 gives you a negative 20 divided by 4 is 5. So we have 2 minus x is equal to negative 5. So how do we isolate x? We need x. We don't need 2 minus x. So our next job could be to subtract 2 from both sides, which will give us 2 minus 2 is 0. So we have 0 minus x or simply negative x is equal to negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. Now if negative x is negative 7, what's x? If you can guess the answer, simply multiply both sides of this equation with negative 1. When you multiply negative x with negative 1, that changes to negative times negative is a positive, x times 1 is x. So we have an x here. The negative sign from the x is gone. That's how you flip the sign of any number by multiplying it with negative 1 is equal to negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7. The sign of negative 7 is also flipped. So we have x is equal to 7. So that's it about solving equations. Hope you feel confident now. Don't forget to get some practice on your own.